Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Desmond, and today we're talking about a really important condition, respiratory acidosis. You might have heard the term before, but what does it really mean? Why does it happen, and how can it affect your body? Don't worry, we're going to break it all down and make it simple to understand. So, let's dive in. First things first, what exactly is respiratory acidosis? It's a condition where your body becomes too acidic because it can't get rid of enough carbon dioxide, CO2. Carbon dioxide is a waste product of metabolism, and normally your lungs get rid of it when you breathe out. But in respiratory acidosis, your lungs aren't able to do this effectively, which leads to a buildup of CO2 in the blood. This makes the blood more acidic than it should be. As CO2 builds up, it reacts with water in the blood to form carbonic acid, which lowers the pH of your blood, causing it to become more acidic. And just like any imbalance in the body, this can cause some serious health issues if not treated. So, what causes respiratory acidosis? There are several things that can interfere with your ability to breathe out CO2, leading to this condition. Let's go over some of the main causes. Chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD. This is the most common cause. In COPD, the lungs are damaged, making it harder to breathe out CO2. Asthma. During a severe asthma attack, the airways become narrowed and breathing becomes difficult, leading to a buildup of CO2. Sleep apnea. This condition causes breathing pauses during sleep, which can prevent normal CO2 removal. Pneumonia. Infection in the lungs can reduce the ability of the lungs to clear CO2. Chest trauma or injury. Anything that affects your ability to breathe deeply, like a rib fracture, can reduce CO2 exhalation. Oversedation. If you take too much of a sedative or drug like opioids, it can depress your breathing, leading to CO2 buildup. As you can see, anything that reduces your ability to breathe normally, or that damages the lungs, can contribute to respiratory acidosis. How do you know if someone is experiencing respiratory acidosis? Here are the key symptoms to look out for. Shortness of breath. Since you're not getting rid of CO2, you may feel like you can't catch your breath. Confusion or drowsiness. The buildup of CO2 can affect brain function. Fatigue. Your body is not getting enough oxygen, so you feel weak or tired. Headache. The increase in CO2 can lead to headaches due to the acidity in the blood. Rapid breathing. Your body tries to get rid of the excess CO2 by breathing faster. Bluish skin. Cyanosis. In severe cases, the skin may appear bluish due to low oxygen levels in the blood. If you or someone else experiences these symptoms, especially if they have a condition that affects breathing, it's important to get medical help quickly. Now, let's talk about how respiratory acidosis affects the body. When there's too much CO2 in the blood, it leads to acid buildup, and this can disrupt how your organs function. Let's go over some of the effects. The brain. Increased CO2 in the blood can affect brain function, leading to confusion, drowsiness, or even coma if not treated. The heart. High CO2 levels can cause the blood vessels to constrict, increasing blood pressure, and possibly leading to arrhythmias, irregular heartbeats. The lungs. If your body can't clear CO2, it will keep building up, making it harder to breathe. Kidneys. To help balance the acid in the blood, the kidneys will try to excrete extra acid and hold on to more bicarbonate, a base. But this takes time and can only partially compensate for the CO2 buildup. So, as you can see, respiratory acidosis can really affect several body systems, especially if it's not treated quickly. Let's make this interactive. Have you or someone you know ever experienced respiratory acidosis or any of the symptoms I mentioned? How was it managed? Drop your comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. So how is respiratory acidosis treated? The goal is to treat the underlying condition and help the body get rid of excess CO2. Here's how it's typically managed. Oxygen therapy. If the person's oxygen levels are low, they may be given oxygen to help their body get the oxygen it needs. Ventilator support. In severe cases, a mechanical ventilator may be used to help the person breathe and remove CO2 from their body. Treating the underlying cause. 
For example, if it's caused by COPD or asthma, the person might need bronchodilators or steroids to open up the airways. Medications. In some cases, medications like sodium bicarbonate may be used to help neutralize the acids in the blood. The treatment depends on the severity of the condition and the cause, but the main focus is to reduce the CO2 buildup and support the body's normal breathing function. Now, let's talk about how you can help prevent respiratory acidosis, especially if you're at risk. Here are some tips. Manage chronic conditions. If you have COPD, asthma, or sleep apnea, make sure you follow your doctor's treatment plan. Avoid smoking. Smoking damages the lungs and can make breathing more difficult, increasing the risk of respiratory acidosis. Use oxygen therapy, if prescribed. If your doctor recommends oxygen therapy, be sure to follow their instructions to help maintain proper oxygen levels. Watch for warning signs. If you have a condition that affects your breathing, monitor yourself for symptoms like shortness of breath, confusion, or fatigue. By managing these risk factors, you can help prevent respiratory acidosis or catch it early if it starts to develop. Here are the key things to remember about respiratory acidosis. It occurs when the body can't get rid of enough CO2 leading to an acidic blood pH. Causes include conditions like COPD, asthma, sleep apnea, and pneumonia. Symptoms include shortness of breath, confusion, headaches, and fatigue. Treatment focuses on oxygen therapy, ventilator support, and addressing the underlying cause. Prevention is all about managing chronic conditions and monitoring for early symptoms. Thanks so much for watching. I hope this video helped you understand respiratory acidosis and how it affects your body. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon so you never miss a new video. And of course, feel free to drop any questions or comments below. Stay healthy, and I'll see you next time.